it's a totally natural but somehow wildly harvested plant. Yes. <laughs> so is it commonly known here as something that you uh, make garments it's, it's with? It's right here. Just but, behind you. But is it is it something that local people use to make clothes? It, in the olden days, there was a tradition of making using these fibers because there was no other natural fibers when the synthetic fibers came before the synthetic fibers. There is no other choice. This was called a bowstring hemp, and it is uh, they were using it for fishing nets and other you know rope kind related resources, which can. This was everywhere available, so it was the easiest source for them to get the rope mm -hmm. very strong. But we were like uh, a lot fascinated also when it comes to like natural fibers about specifically this plant since it grows uh, only like in the dry lands mm -hmm. and it doesn't need any water. It doesn't no zero. It grows widely and mostly it uh, needs sun to grow. So it all actually started that, uh, that uh, Shankar was uh, looking for just natural fibers. I said, okay, I'm not doing any injustice anymore. I'm stopping this. Either I do a fabric which is completely sustainable, mm -hmm. otherwise no. Okay. So I went on research uh, trying to find out about different fibers. Mm -hmm. A lot of fibers I saw, but none of the fibers were really like uh didn't have that feel for me you know i would say like the fibers did not have the versatility to, to be spinned you know like to make it a perfect yarn yeah. and this fiber had the flow and it looked more like cellulose which can be compared with cotton yeah. that's why you blend it with cotton because it's more closer to that fiber yeah. so yeah this is uh slowly became more and more and with a lot of trials and we did uh, nearly 3-4 trials of 100-100 kgs to see how this yarn is working yeah. to set up a perfect blend. And this is how the whole project came in in this last two years I would say. This was in the books when I researched a lot. It was said it is a pioneer plant which means it grows first before any vegetation comes in. Yeah. So and this plant becomes the host for bigger trees. So where this has so much of nutrient, so one plant could help the plant, the, whole, the big tree to survive the summer. We started exploring and we started doing some research in farms in Oroville. Oro Archer was the first people, they were hesitant at the beginning. So I insisted we did some trials in small area. Then they understood and we spoke to them, they understood what is our intentions here, like if we can take out like so much part of pesticides which are used on the land and uh, and then they agreed to the project and they're very happy with the results their you know diseases decreased and you know in the land it's more uh, they can see the changes on the naked eye so. even though we started off like focusing <coughs> on the fabrics but we saw like okay we get only two percent of the fibers what are we going to do with the rest so we could we couldn't just pour it down and start collecting some kind of biomass so, so our brains were constantly working what to do with this so then we found out that actually yeah you can do so much more with this plant so what is the plan for the next year we are planning for cultivation uh, we've already spoken to one Oroville farmer uh, uh, who is willing to do this as a trial project in his place he has land free and there is another person who is an organic farmer Mm -hmm. who has some 30 acre of farm and she's willing to use our plant as a multi-crop. So we want to do this dry plant cultivation. Mm -hmm. So in the future, near future, they will have some kind of, you know, income after five years from that same dry land. We want to do it only in the dry lands where nothing else goes.